Welcome back, Agent Nation. It's your host, Agent Beamstar. Let's get right into the news. Hey, it's not a week in the 2K community without some juicy drama. Here I am today, ladies and gentlemen, to cover it, cause oh boy, was it juicy. But before we get started, we just dropped an extreme horse video over on the AMP channel. So after you get done watching this, I'm gonna leave a card at the end screen and a link in the description if you guys wanna watch that. Monday is also podcast day. We dove into some deep topics. Some of them are stories we're covering here today in this 2K drama. Alerts. And on top of that, today, this video is brought to you by Raycon. I've been using these Raycon E25 earbuds for the better part of the last two weeks. And I'm gonna let you know right now, they are it. They have everything you might want in a premium earbud. Six hours of battery life. Bass, oh my God, have you ever listened to music without bass? A healthy amount of bass. Look how covert they are in my, look it already paired to the iPhone, man. It did it in 0.5 seconds. And you get all of that at less than half the price of what regular premium earbuds go for. So if you don't stop what you're doing right now, head to the top of the description, click the link. Oh, I legally can't do anything about it. No, this is just an ad. So you guys, I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I'm telling you, they're wavy. I've been using them. Or go to the top URL and type buyraycon.com slash agent. Thank you to Raycon for helping sponsor this video. For our first story of the day. This is actually not a happy story, so I shouldn't be like that excited, you know? I, should, I need to tone it down a little bit. One of the GOATs, the OGs in the NBA 2K community, Shake and Bake is in the news because he posted a video the other day just about done with NBA 2K. It was literally titled, I am done with NBA 2K20, my team, here's why. And in this 17 minute video, he goes on to explain this. One, I'm sick of spending money on packs, I really am. <laughs> and you know that's bad because I literally make money from doing it and I just cannot bring myself to do it right now. It's terrible. <laughs> It's really bad, bro. Every time I do a pack of first of all, I feel like it's the same shit every time. It's like, you either A, you pull the cards and, and you get really lucky, or B, you don't pull shit, and that's most of the time. And it's like, okay, this video sucks, and I'm just complaining. No one wants to hear that. It's boring, and I just wasted, you know, 100 200 $300, you know, however many dollars you spend on packs, bro. And this not, this not a regular content creator. Shake and Bake has been creating 2K videos since my team started, like at the or, or origin of the game mode. And so he's one of the OGs. I saw this video was alarming. He followed up on Twitter saying this, the amount of people going out of their way to be rude to me because I stopped uploading their favorite video game is quite sad. I just feel bad, like you must be miserable as to go to these efforts, man. LD2K responded to him saying, make content that makes you feel creatively fulfilled. Always. We haven't always seen eye to eye in the past, but always want people to create things that make them happy. Thanks, my guy. I'm feeling pretty great this week. I'm definitely in a better mindset than in the past few. Appreciate you showing love to Jay earlier too. You're doing great. LD2K briefly mentioned that they weren't always seeing eye to eye. Like three, four years ago, there was uh, some drama between LD... I'm not gonna get into that. And so for the past couple weeks, Shake and Bake has not been uploading my team. And I fully understand why. He's been doing it for like seven years now. Man, y'all get tired of a game in like four months, right? Most games. He's been doing it for seven years. Yeah, I can see why he's exhausted. He's just tired of it. Maybe he just wants a break. I do hope at some point though, he comes back. Cause it does suck to see him go. Like he's uploading Animal Crossing on his channel right now. And that's a game that I've made fun of for the entirety of my life that I'm just now realizing that people actually enjoy. <laughs> On separate my team news, Troy Dan was a little bit frustrated with the state of my team. He put out this tweet. My team desperately needs a ranked mode. Man, I've been saying that forever. Well, not with my team, but with really any mode. Ranked modes make every game more fun. Like on Call of Duty Warzone, just the fact that they have a leaderboard has me hooked. Right now, I'm ranked top 1% in Warzone. If they didn't have a leaderboard, if I couldn't compare myself to the top whatever percent, then I wouldn't be nearly as interested to play. I agree with you on this one, Troy. It might get me into my team. I used to play 5v5 competitively on game battles and Virgin Gaming on all those amateur ladders. That was so much fun for me. When you take the competition out and it just becomes very casual across the board, I lose interest, me personally. But that doesn't mean that NBA 2K is down bad because if you watched the last couple drama alerts, you know 
They broke records in terms of sales for NBA 2K20, but things turned up a notch. A few days ago when they released the uh, Opal Bull Bull, like, you know, the giant mammoth of a player that's seven foot seven or whatever, but he also has like an 80 speed now. It was top trending on Twitter with 70K tweets. And for those of you who use Twitter, you know just how impressive that is. A user on Twitter by the name of DBG put out this tweet saying, Bull Bull stats and badges, basically a Galaxy Opal Thon maker who's two inches taller, the best card in the set by far. And he linked to his stats. Man, how could you have a player this tall with an 80 acceleration, 79 speed with ball, 80 speed? God damn, man. The driving dunk at 85. Like, if you get a hand on this car, bro, it's game, set, match, done. So there were some people excited that 2K was crazy enough to try something like this because it's going to be fun. But there was other people arguing you just ruined the game mode by unleashing an unstoppable player that no one's going to be capable of defending. RJ Watt gave his input on Twitter saying they gave Bull Bull at 80 speed and 83 handles. Here, it's pre-Greek, just not at the one. Sheesh! And uh, yeah, he linked to the stats here as well. <laughs> Jesus, man, what was 2K thinking? <laughs> so then you might be thinking, hey, my team is getting all this content. How about us people over at the park? So Solo DF put out this tweet on Twitter, um, basically saying, shout out 2K, because they put out this funny ad in the, in the neighborhood, practice vertical social distancing. <laughs> Which, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of funny. Whoever thought of that, creative. LD2K responded to this saying, yes sir, team working on more events for you all too. Can you tell us if we will get another Puma Mania or something like that event? We will keep you updated via 2K TV with all events as the team works on them. Flex emoji. So I made a video a week ago concerned that I thought we was gonna get zero content. And I hope some of these are new events or just some new stuff in the park, but it's at least we don't feel absolutely abandoned that they're actually gonna continue to drop some rotation of events. Cool. For the next story of the day, ladies and gentlemen, Overtime TW has now ended. For those of you who don't know, about like four or five months ago, TW, the group including Cole the Man, Hank the Tank, and a few other notable figures in the NBA 2K community, joined Overtime, which is like basketball-focused media entity online. And the whole point of it was to just make group content and I guess, yeah, get just just make content. They moved into a house together in Miami with the, the new Overtime TW headquarters, and we're hearing now that apparently their relationship has ended. Breeze was the first to post on Twitter saying this. I will never make the mistake of working for someone else again. My whole life I've been my own boss. It's time to get back to that. I'd rather bet on myself. I don't need anyone else betting on me. OT was a short chapter, but it's time to turn the page with my boys by my side. Hashtag peace out OT. Hank gave his two cents, never working for a boss again. Lol, I wasted so much time for literally no reason that I could have spent grinding my own channel. Later OT, peace sign emoji. Cole the man put out a flurry of tweets. He said, work hard and become your own boss. I'll never work for anyone. So the Overtime TW official Twitter account gave their own little statement, wishing them the best of luck and saying that the relationship has now ended. This is big news for a variety of different reasons. It's the first time that industry, even though Overtime is not industry, industry like mainstream, but industry took a chance on content creators at least in the NBA 2K sphere. So for the most part, me, I have my eyes on it to see how it's gonna perform. Unfortunately, in this situation, for reasons they haven't explained in these tweets, the relationship didn't work out. But the even more unfortunate part of that is that they're gonna have to find a new place to live while all this crazy stuff is going on around them. It's gonna be hard to find some real estate, especially when you're young and uh, I assume most of them have a lot of money. They're gonna think you're like a dealer or something, man. Trust me, I've been through it. So it's gonna be difficult to lock down a home, so it's incredibly even more unfortunate. This is a topic that me and Lo dive real deep into, just talking like real straightforward about what it's like behind the scenes and why we think this played out the way that it played out. I'm gonna leave a link to our podcast in the description. It should be out either today or tomorrow, so be subscribed for that. But hey, best of wishes to the OT boys. Oh, I guess they're not OT anymore. Best of wishes to the TW guys. I actually don't know if they're even TW anymore. They haven't clarified that. Simply Grinding put out a tweet on Twitter saying, overtime really ended? 
time to combine TW and DF and make the next super team. <laughs> Over time, GW has ended, and no, this isn't fake beef. We're gonna keep our heads up and keep pushing forward. Still trying to figure out what's the next step. I'm super excited about the future. Love all you guys with the little hearts. Cola Man followed up announcing that he's moving back to Georgia, which is where he's originally from. So he's leaving Florida to return here, probably because like this is where a lot of his friends growing up are, his family is growing up, and it's where he's most likely most, most, most comfortable. I don't know why I paraphrased. I really could have just read his tweet, but whatever. <laughs> For our next story of the day, ladies and gentlemen, the NBA 2K community has been on fire a little bit recently because both Troy Dan and Cash got together to put put together an all-star team up event, reached out to a whole bunch of different content creators, including Agent Zero himself, and hosted the event yesterday on both Twitch and YouTube. This was one of the biggest things that a content creator has no, just flat out. This is one of the biggest things in NBA 2K history, just in terms of viewership. The last time we seen something this exciting was when Ticino came to North America and started to wager against all the North American content creators. So how it went down was Cash and Troy uploaded the draft on their channels. They drafted amongst the pool of players available. And then we played a best of three on All-Star Team Up. It was a lot of fun, like so much fun. Between everybody combined, there was around like 75,000 people watching live. Champ uh, somehow got the screenshots here. He said over 77,000 people are watching the game of 2K on YouTube and Twitch. The following are streaming and playing and he dropped some screenshots. Here we have Troy Dan pulling 31,000, which is absolutely unheard of in 2K. I pulled 14,000. Cash was doing 26 over on Twitch. Even Annoying was pulling 4,000. It was so cool to see the entire community come together, and you knew it was intense because none of us wanted to lose. It was a lot of sh being talked back and forth. And so to see the event do so well, the most fun I have playing 2K in a while, it was a big event in 2K history. So it's huge shout outs to both Troy and Cash for helping put it together. Troy's video of the stream that eventually went live on his channel went number three trending on all of YouTube. Think about that. But amongst all the excitement in the event and not wanting to lose, by the way, we did win the event, man. I don't know what to tell you, man. We did win. There was some toxicity in the chat. Troy Dan wanted to address said toxicity. He posted this on Twitter. You guys in the comments replies are being super toxic to Los for no reason. It's a goddamn video game for fun and the community. It's not that serious. I'm glad he came out. He's one of the most entertaining guys in the community, which is facts. Los is on the other team, but from what I was told, there was so much toxicity that at the end of the game, Los just left the Discord and quit the game. Now granted, he didn't perform great. Who cares? They didn't put together a collection of the best players. They just chose Funny content creators they thought was gonna make for entertaining streams and videos. So lay off Los, man. And the funny thing is he could probably beat most of y'all at the game. Okay, maybe I'm pushing it. Maybe uh, I, I might be pushing it a little bit. <laughs> for our... Oh my goodness, some NBA players is taking some serious shots at NBA 2K. Darian Fox put out this tweet on Twitter. 2K is a trash game. That's why we don't want to stream it. Crying laughing emoji, shrug emoji. He's saying this in response to people in his chat asking him to stream NBA 2K. It's no secret that since the NBA is not going on right now, a lot of the NBA players are looking for things to do. Plenty of them, like Darren Fox, uh, Carl Anthony Towns, I think, Devin Booker, are all streaming Call of Duty, 2K, or whatever the game is. So while they're streaming those games, they're asking them, yo, why aren't you, why aren't you streaming 2K? Darren Fox had to say. Then he kind of started a whirlwind because God forbid any NBA player says something about 2K, everybody has something to say about it. Donovan Mitchell quote tweeted him with the L. Darian Fox replied, lol, don't get it twisted. I'm still nice at it, but even the people that get paid to play it don't like it. <laughs> hey, it's a hey, 2K20 is not the game, man. <laughs> it can be fun, like all-star team up, we just had a blast. But hey, man, we broken our fair share of controllers. <laughs> Ronnie 2K, he had to get himself involved because why else wouldn't he? He replied saying this. I may have a way you can all settle this. Stay tuned. Now, I don't think he had a way to settle this, but Ronnie 2K did eventually play Donovan Mitchell on his live stream, so that happened, but they didn't really end up settling it probably because Darren Fox said, nah, I don't want to play that garbage ass game. 
Mike Scott responded to De'Aaron Fox's original tweet saying, nah, for real. Ja Morant quote tweeted De'Aaron Fox's original tweet with a whole lot of crying laughing emojis and a shrug emoji. For our last story of the day, GameStop is bugging, ladies and gentlemen. A couple weeks ago when the Roni was getting pretty serious and everybody was locking down, etc., GameStop refused because they were declaring that they are essential business. They're not. You're a video game store. It's not really that essential, especially when we could just buy the games online. But GameStop didn't think so, so they kept their stores open, which created a whole bunch of legal hassle across the country. I understand. GameStop is very close to going out of business, and every few months they're closing dozens of stores. And it's on rotation, and we don't know when the bleeding is going to stop, so if they have to close down all their stores, there's a good chance they might not make it out the other side. There's a tweet here that um, I found interesting. Hobby Lobby owner David Green is telling store managers to stay open despite because his wife had a vision from God. He also warns they'll all have to tighten their belts soon. His net worth is $6.4 billion. Hourly employees don't get paid sick leave. So he's trying to force people to work at GameStop even though it's not essential business. But then when they inevitably had to close down because that's what the law said, <laughs> he's like, nah, I'm not gonna pay none of y'all. And I understand it a little bit because if he did have to pay them, he'd probably be out of business next month. But at the same time, it's kind of just laughable that somebody could be that delusional and lack innovation to that degree. So if you were a huge fan of GameStop or EB Games growing up, it might be time to just say a final goodbye. Because I actually don't know how much longer they're going to be able to stay in business. Seem like they just keep taking more and more hits. I'm going to keep it a beam with you. I go there from time to time to buy like random things like PS3 controllers. Because they have them everywhere, so it's usually the closest place for me to buy something like that. So it will be kind of sad to see him go, but also they scam me a bunch of times. So I'll be kind of happy to see him go as well. Although it'll be kind of sad that a lot of people lose their jobs. They scam me before, so I'm just going to be kind of happy at the same time. You know what I mean? So um, that's it for the news, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys are new to the channel you haven't already, subscribe. We drop these, I don't know, whenever there's enough news. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. I'm going to leave now because I'm sweating under this fedora. It's hot. Peace.